Well, the alt-right has a little extra pep in their goose step, but it's the left that's been marching in the streets. Donald Trump is president-elect. Because I've been watching Hillary the last few days. She's totally unhinged. We don't want any of that. She has become unhinged. But if the election results have you feeling a little unhinged, fear not. Pot is now legal in Maine, Nevada, Massachusetts, and California. We've got to be nice and cool. Nice and cool. This November, I'm thankful for having plenty of shit to podcast about. Put on your cup and athletic supporter. The Savage Sack Tap starts now. You're listening to The Savage Sack Tap. It's not a podcast. It's not a half cast. It's just a quick shot to the balls to help you finish off the week. We're cutting through the bullshit, filling your Friday with rage-fueled logic, and cracking a few jokes along the way. So grab a bag of frozen peas. There's a savage sack tap coming your way. It's new, lascivious, salacious, outrageous. The Trumps go to Washington. It sounds like a great title for like a 1990s family comedy uh, with one of those goofy promotional posters featuring the whole family against a blank white background. Coming in January. He's used to buying real estate. Now let's see how he handles the biggest move of his life. Jeff Bridges is Donald Trump in The Trumps Go to Washington. Um, But now it's happening in real life, and some people are not entirely pleased. Uh, We will get to all of that and more as we recap election 2016 and find out how the GOP hurled a a 99-mile-per-hour fastball that fucking caught the left looking, Carlos Beltran style, in this edition of the Savage Sack Tap. For my first-time listeners, please check me out on Facebook. It's www.facebook.com slash thesavagecrew. I'm on Twitter as well, at Mike Montone, um, the Savage Crew on YouTube, where all of our archived material and some god-awful original video is hosted. And we did we just launched an uh, Instagram account as well. And, of course, we're on the web at www.thesavagecrew.com. But before we carve the intellectual turkey, a little shitty Thanksgiving joke for you, here is a quick word from our partner charity. Every year, millions of men around the world reach full sexual maturity with a penis that's less than six inches long. Well, they say everything's bigger in Texas. Yes, and I must have been born in Arkansas. Now, Cox of Love is giving those men a second chance, but we need your help. Walked in and found my wife having relations with the gardener. Had to exercise my Second Amendment right to protect my manhood. Killed them both. For just 25 cents a day, the cost of a gumball, you can adopt one of these men and help them afford the surgically enhanced genitals they so desperately need. And down here, it's legal to shoot your wife for sleeping with a more well endowed fella, especially if and he's a damn minority. DA was nice enough to put me in touch with Cox of Love. Thanks to the donations we've already received, Cox of Love has been able to give scores of men a new lease on life. In addition to the satisfaction of helping a less endowed man get the penis he's always wanted, Cox of Love will provide you with regular updates on the status of your adopted cock. Hell, now I'm serving up big cuts of smoked brisket. So what are you waiting for? Dial 1-800-BIG-COCK right now. That's 1-800-B-I-G-C-O-C-K. Or visit www.coxoflove.com and adopt a cock today. Wouldn't you like to buy a new cock for someone like me? Cocks of love coming up big for the little guys. Oh boy. Election 2016. It has been something um, like something out of the WWE actually. For the last couple of years it's looked like the straight white male was down for the count and gender non-conforming pansexual persons of color were climbing that ladder in the middle of the ring, and they were about to reach up and grab the championship belt, when all of a sudden... Oh my god, it's orange Donald Trump! Oh, he's got a metal folding chair, he's on his way to the ring. The gender non-conforming pansexual persons of color are about to grab the belt. No, oh, here comes Trump! Oh my god, Trump took them out! The gender non-conforming pansexual persons of color are down! 
But Trump is taking the straight white male, he's draping him over the gender non-conforming persons of color. Oh my god! That's it, it's over, the straight white male wins! And you can hear the crowd going wild! Alright, I'm gonna take a call in a few minutes here that will kind of break down how the Donald became the pussy grabber elect, but first a word for my liberal listeners. If if I haven't. Actually, this entire fucking episode is a word for my liberal listeners because you guys gotta get schooled up on how the rest of the country fucking thinks. And thankfully, I can bridge that gap. Um, in any case, if to, you know, the, to the two liberals who listen to this fucking show, uh, the response from the left to this thing has been fucking laughable. All right, I get the First Amendment gives you the right to peacefully protest, although I'm not quite sure that includes rioting in the streets. And, you know, beyond that, it's not doing anything, all right? You're essentially trying to tread water in a tsunami. It is not going to change the fact that Donald Trump will be the president, all right? Seriously, you are fucking embarrassing yourselves. Uh, students at Cornell, I think it was a good Cornell. If it wasn't Cornell, forgive me, but a uh, school in upstate New York somewhere hosted a cry-in. That's right. They hosted a fucking cry-in. They spent the time and effort to gather their fellow students in one place to cry together over the election of Donald Trump. That is like some shit straight out of fucking Portlandia. Little fucking community organizers in training. How do you even plan a cry-in? Hey, Devin. Oh, uh, hey, Skylar. Hey, Devin, actually, today I'm going by Sky because it represents Mother Earth and the power of femininity, which I think we really need right now because a cis-hetero white male has been elected to the White House, which is oppressive to women's, trans persons, Latin exes, and particularly to already marginalized persons of color because using the word white in the name of a house built by slaves is just like so fucking ignorant, I can't even. So um, if you could refer to me as Sky today, yeah, I'd really appreciate it. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I totally didn't mean to be so tone deaf. It's been such a hard week ever since the election. Which gender pronoun should I use for you today? Well, I appreciate your concern, but I prefer you not use the term tone deaf as it marginalizes the auditorily challenged. Today, my preferred pronoun is simply the letter Z, but pronounced Z. -uh. Z? No. Z. -uh. Z? No. Z. -uh. Okay, okay. Z. -uh. So, anyway, I was thinking we should. Hold a cry-in to show solidarity with those who voted for Hillary. Hmm. No? Well, it's just that a cry-in might not be inclusive enough. 0.000000000003% of the campus population was born without tear ducts, and holding a cry-in could be perceived as really hostile at a time when a lot of students are really feeling very unsafe. So maybe we should try something less threatening. Oh, how about a hug-in? I'm not so sure about that. A hug-in could be very triggering to women on campus. As you know, every time a woman leaves her home, she has a 95% chance of being forcibly hugged by a member of the patriarchy. Hosting a hug-in could potentially trigger any woman who has ever been hugged against her will. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm not myself today. My Starbucks app crashed and I couldn't get a latte because I refused to pay with cash because it's a tool of white capitalists and my credit card won't work because I maxed it out buying the new iPhone. It's not your fault. You're like being oppressed by an unfair system. Your coffee should be free because like, I mean, corporate ownership of black coffee beans is like totally a construct of cis hetero white males and a form of agro slavery and they should totally be subsidizing our coffee to make up for years of patriarchal oppression in the caffeinated beverage industry so it's like just such a fucking injustice complete fucking injustice so anyway how about a sit-in instead i'm not sure that's such a good idea there are a number of differently abled students on campus and sitting down comes dangerously close to appropriating wheelchair culture? Z uh, you're totally right. What if we all just lay down on the floor? That could totally work. 
Who should we invite? Uh, the entire LGBTQIAAP community, all Latin exes, persons of color, and feminists. Perfect. Ooh, but how about all Latin exes except Cubans? They're way too macho, and they voted for Trump. Okay, perfect. Oh, and no straight white males. Yuck. Obviously. Okay. IGTG. My roommate dropped her gender studies notes on the way to class, and one of the dude bros on the lax team picked them up and handed them to her, and she's feeling totally microaggressed right now. Oh my god, that's like heinous and really invasive. She should totally report him to the school. It's basically rape. They're so right. Okay, I'll WhatsApp you later. Oh yeah, if you come by to watch Girls later, can you bring a copy of Mindy Kaling's autobiography that I lent you? Totes. Yas. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, the fucking left. Look, do you guys not get that years of social justice finger-wagging was eventually going to come back to bite you in the fucking ass? I mean, did you really not think that eventually people would get sick and tired of hearing all of this shit and not bad? Like, listen to this fucking shit. You're fucking a white male! And you misgender my friends over and over again. That's when I shouted out. Oh, my friends, me! It's the law of the land, the law of the land you created, which you're entitled at. See the law of the land as you called it, but you know the law of the land is killing black men unarmed on camera. Do so you understand that what you are doing breeds racism? <laughs> if you can't name an intellectual... You know, God forbid anyone criticize a woman, trans person, homosexual, or Muslim while trying to make a salient point about something without being labeled a bigot before completing a single fucking sentence. Uh, and, and don't get me started on the fucking Facebook statuses and the stupid fucking open letters you've all been writing since the day after the election, which, by, by the way... Uh, Icing on the fucking cake, or silver lining, whatever the fuck you want to call it. This reminds me, do yourself a favor and check out the one that Lena Dunham wrote. I'm going to be honest, I almost came in my pants. It was so satisfying to watch her weep. I mean, I vehemently oppose Donald Trump as a candidate, but this social justice freakout is the absolute ultimate silver lining on the fucking Trump election. Fucking, the internet open letters, yeah, those are real useful Oh my god, how am I going to explain this to my children? I don't know, maybe a, a basic lef uh, basic fucking lesson in civics and how the electoral college works and how Democrats didn't show up on election day? That might help. Christ, if I see one more of these pseudo-intellectual crybaby fucking progressive I don't usually post on Facebook think pieces, then someone, someone... I'm not saying who, but someone is going to get another visit from the uh, social media Gestapo. <clears throat> Open the door. We know you are in there. We saw the Oberlin College sticker and the I'm with her sticker on the windshield of your Prius. Now open the door. Did you think that changing your profile picture to the H logo would really convince people to vote for the crooked Hillary? Open the door! Oh, you told a white male to check his privilege on the Twitter? Now a white male is headed back to the White House. Your methods were ineffective. Open the door! Wow, wow. I'm not sure how to explain the Uber Trump's election to my kinder. Wow, wow, wow. So sad. People don't like the crony capitalism and the email scandals. Maybe we should start a petition on the change.org. Open the door! Hans, bring up the battering ram. They'll be wishing they had moved to Canada when we get done with them. <clears throat> Look, engaging in social media virtue signaling doesn't help anyone win an election or spark social change. Okay, it's not a sacrifice to change your profile picture to a fucking H, right? As we say about those support the troops bumper stickers, it's literally the least you can do, right? Yeah, that's right. 
You want to see what real sacrifice and real oppression look like? Don't you pop in fucking Ghosts of Mississippi or Mississippi Burning to your DVD player, alright? That's some real ass shit. That's people dying for racial equality and social change. You know, it's not some dickhead in horn-rimmed glasses writing a whiny fucking Tumblr blog from his Williamsburg loft. Um, you can't care about politics for two months every four years and act like it's going to make a difference. Okay, you have to get out there, you gotta take back the house, you gotta lobby, you gotta organize. We know you guys love to fucking organize, but you gotta do it for a specific cause, alright? Like those bad motherfuckers in North Dakota who have been, like, staring down dogs and armed security to protect their land, alright? That's being politically involved. If your only involvement in politics includes sharing articles from Mike.com or BuzzFeed about how a college should change its mascot because the school's founders all owned slaves in the 17 fucking hundreds, then you aren't involved in politics. You're just a fucking asshole who doesn't understand historical context. Maybe you should move to Canada. Um, which, by the way, before moving ahead, I want to briefly address this whole moving to Canada threat. First of all, no one's gonna miss you if you go, so by all fucking means. Uh, secondly, who the fuck moves to Canada? Canadians don't even want to be there. That's why they all move to the U.S. There's, aside from, like, two or three cool cities, they don't have shit up there. It's just wide-open, ice-covered nothingness, weird accents, and hockey players who are good, but not quite as good as their Eastern European counterparts. Uh, fuck, we've even got black guys playing ice hockey now, so I'm not, I'm not even sure Canada has, has a purpose for existing other than keeping America's head warm. Um... If you really want to move somewhere, then I would suggest going to uh, Thailand or, like, fucking Vietnam or some shit. Uh, the cost of living is minimal, and for a couple of bucks, you can sip on a San Mig Light, listen to some 80s jams, and get a hand job from a 95-pound 19-year-old bar girl with skin so perfect that she doesn't need makeup and a set of ass cheeks that hasn't been turned into a pile of mush by McDonald's and Chipotle and a society that tells people to love their bodies even when they're a metric ton overweight. That's right, Chris Christie, I'm looking at you. Anyway, it's a hell of a lot better than frozen lakes and self-righteous American expats. Um, oh yeah, I wasn't sure where to fit this in, but I feel like it needs to be said. The next Nalen Palin video, if they are so good to, uh, to grace us with one, absolutely needs to feature. Uh, we need a Michelle Obama, Huma Abedin, Megyn Kelly, Ivanka, and Melania, and I'm probably forgetting a few, but this was, and I really think it's been overshadowed by the Donald's huge personality and all of the, you know, tiny hands, tiny dick, orange skin, crooked Hillary emails, this was a fantastic election for bangable chicks, probably, probably one of the best rosters uh, we've seen in a, an election cycle in, in a long time, so that's fantastic, and I'm sure someone's gonna, that's, that sexist. What you just said is sexist. You're part of the patriarchy. Wah, wah. Anyway, uh, Mr. Anderson will be joining us in a moment. First, a word from our sponsor. 2016 has been a hard year, especially for millennials. Harambe's dead, the glass ceiling remains intact, and every day, millions of white people appropriate Mexican culture by dining at Chipotle. That's why Uber is proud to announce the launch of Uber Safe Space. A man held the door I felt me. so microaggressive. The syllabus came without a trigger warning. I was mansplained. I felt unsafe. Open your Uber app and tap the big pink S. And one of our specially screened and certified safety pin drivers will pick you up and take you to the safe space of your choice. Need to leave wherever you are right now and go to a fair trade coffee shop, Apple store, adult daycare center, gender neutral bathroom, your parents' house, or anywhere else that makes you feel safe? Uber Safe Space will get you there. And since we castrate all of our drivers before admitting them into the Uber Safe Space program, you can rest assured knowing that you'll be feeling safe the second we arrive. 
But don't take our word. Uber Safe Space took me to a LGBTQ farmer's market. They took me to a vegan steakhouse. I felt really safe. It was so empowering. Thanks, Uber Safe Space. I felt safe. You never know when an everyday situation will make you feel unsafe. Now, you don't have to worry. Send for the car with the safety pin on the side, and let us bring you somewhere safe. All right, all right. Let's make that banana phone ring and get Mr. Anderson ring, ring, on the ring, line ring, here. Ring, 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 ring. Mr. Anderson, welcome aboard. Um, hey, there's a lot of people. After after my reactions on Tuesday and Wednesday, they want to want to listen to me look like an asshole. So hey, there's going to be a big big. Um, there's going to be a lot of people that want to consume this, so. Um, I, I think you'll be pretty well from it. Nice. I actually, uh, to be totally honest, I was not uh, shocked quite as much by this result as some of my liberal media cohorts at my uh, my actual job. I think if you, and you and I probably have this more than most people because you're a guy from from the, the Northeast, as am I, and we both served in the military. So if you look at our Facebook news feeds, mine was you know, half lock her up every day and then half I'm with her every day. And it, so we don't get these sort of, you know, they call them the, the liberal echo chamber. Th this, uh, the rise of Donald Trump is in no way a fucking surprise. Uh, but I was, I, I want to go to you because I'm, I'm, you know, I voted for uh, Gary Johnson because my big, my massive issue in this election, and I'm very happy that, that California, Massachusetts, Maine, and um, Florida, Nevada, Florida, too, right? Nevada uh, Florida, and I think North or South Dakota went, and Arkansas with uh, the medical. But okay, gotcha. We got uh, legal recreational in a bunch of states, which I think is a, a huge deal. I think it does a lot for, uh, obviously, tax revenue, um, the criminal justice, you know, keeping young black and Hispanic men out of prison. A, a lot of other than allowing me to get high on really good shit legally. That's fair. That's but, fair. Um, and you should be able to. I, I agree with you. You abs absolutely should. Look, those are the kind of individual liberties, by the way, that if we could get the uh, the Republican Party to stand for, I would be over there like a motherfucker. Uh, so, so do you think a guy like Gary Johnson, uh, a guy who his campaign slogan was to quote-unquote feel the Johnson, do you think that, um, that uh, he can actually get something done? And I get it, he was, he was a governor. Um, but I just had no faith in the way he ran his campaign for the past, uh, what, 12, 15 months? Uh, he, he couldn't even get over 5%. Yeah. So how, do, how, do, how do we think that he could bring people together to actually get something done, like a, a federal, uh, you know, lifting the federal ban on uh, marijuana? Uh, I think that he, he had pretty much said he was going to do by, uh, if he got in by executive action. Mm -hmm. What I think the big the the big issue for Johnson was, and I I like the guy. He's a very likable guy. I think he's he's much smarter than some of his sort of TV flubs made him out to be. He was self funding a campaign, and he he had the you know the Libertarian primary. I think you know I think they nominated him in like June or July for a party that doesn't have much mainstream recognition. That's not enough time for you to win your party and then get the message out to America. Especially when, you know, most of America hears libertarian, they hear anarchist. Um, so that's kind of a tough, you know, to show, up, to show up in August when you're not getting much media coverage and to be like, oh yeah, by the way, guys, I'm Gary Johnson. I want everyone to have, to have marijuana if they want it and... That is just an ineffective way to run to run a campaign. I think they would have been better off with Bill Weld at the head of that ticket. Yes, I agree. I agree. Gary, w Gary wound up just not being the the best messenger for for the libertarian message. I don't think he'll get the the nomination again in 2020. Yeah, so so he's been what? This is third time in a row. Yeah, at least at least it's second or third time. Second in a row, I think. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I I was impressed that 
um, he did get on the ballot in all 50 states, which was, um, uh, given kind of the anarchy of Donald Trump's campaign, you know, there was some, there was some question, right, uh, six months ago, is he even going to get his shit together enough to, to get on the ballot in, in all 50 states? My hope once, I mean, once the, the Aleppo flub kind of happened, I had no delusions of it. I, you know, that was, it, all, all you need is one, one viral meme to make you look like a retard in this country and, and you're sunk. I actually think Donald Trump is unique in his ability to rise above that kind of stuff because he just yeah. brushes it off and says, yeah, I don't give a fuck. And then he just points at someone else and says, well, this, this guy sucks even more. Because Johnson, look, there was that motherfucker wasn't getting elected. Wanted to see him get on and get more than five percent of the um, of the votes so the libertarians get public funding next time. But what? Okay. What I would love to hear from you because you are probably among my Trump voting friends, the most articulate and level-headed. Like I've been looking at at the stuff on on Facebook that seems to be getting everyone so riled up, and it's not without merit. You know, this is. These people who are flipping shit now because, you know, oh, Hillary won the popular vote or whatever. You know, we do we know what the rules are of of the U.S. presidential election. No one gives a fucking shit about the popular vote. You know what states you have to win, and it's it's designed to prevent a candidate from being able to pander to population. And and regional and, election. Yeah. Regional issues, yeah. So if if you could articulate to sort of our left leaning friends. Well, you know how this could possibly happen, and their hopes for a female president could be dashed by the ultimate straight white male. You know the big orange pussy grab. Yeah. I think it's the yeah. most fantastic piece of hey social justice warriors go fuck yourselves. You've been you've been shitting on straight white dudes for the past two years, and you just got it fucking rammed down your throats hard. So I I don't. I didn't think the man, I don't think he's qualified. I'm getting, you know, obviously he has the benefit of the doubt because he's the president-elect, and I hope he does well. But, you know, I I certainly was, was not voting for him. But it sort of softens the blow to know that people like Lena Dunham are so broken by this result. Yeah. Um, so, first off, the big orange pussy is really the big orange swan. Um, you know, kind of the culmination of a lot of things coming together. Um, he is the ultimate black swan. Um, in terms of making the case for Donald Trump, I, I wasn't going to vote Donald Trump probably until the last two weeks or so. You know, every time I see the media, you know, just put center or stage on, on some stupid ass Donald Trump supporter, uh, you know, Donald Trump supporter yells at media guy, told him to go fuck themselves. It's like, I, I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. Donald Trump is, is by and large, a blue dog Democrat. Maybe, maybe a little bit more sadder than New York City Democrat. You know, essentially, he's a, a blue dog Democrat that, you know, came out about a year ago and said that he wants to protect the border. Um, and, you know, those comments were, you know, uh, they should have been more nuanced. They were not. And they were really taken out of context. You know, this whole, they're all rapists. And I mean, it's gotten so much media play. But at the end of the day, it, it, it's not a racist position to want to protect your border. Uh, look at what's going on in Europe right now. Uh, walls are going up. Walls and fences are going up all throughout Europe. And it's not getting the media play that, quote-unquote, a U.S. southern border wall will get. I, I understand what you're saying about Europe, but do you think there's a unique security concern in Europe because militants who have left Europe to train in Syria or Iraq can very easily overland access EU countries through through Turkey, whereas we sort of don't have that same threat of violence from Mexicans coming up, uh, nor do we have the issue, you know, for a Syrian to get into the U.S., even without this uh, extreme vetting, which I assume involves Mountain Dew in some way. Even, even without that, it's still an 18 to 24 month process to, to get into the country if you're uh, a Syrian refugee. So I guess I wonder if in some ways the Europe uh, comparisons are a tad misleading. 
So, uh, no, that's a really good point. So, I, I consider the two processes to be completely different, right? So, you have um, uh, the southern border with Mexico, and then you have refugees from uh, the Middle East. If you talk about refugees from the Middle East, I think that the United States has largely been very responsible uh, for this, right? You know, George Bush and Barack Obama have led to a widespread destabilization of the Middle East. I, I, I think that our foreign policy has butt fucked that place into a goddamn yeah. crater. So I would actually be, you know, in terms of my positions from Donald Trump, I would be uh, pretty much opposite of him. You know, in terms of taking refugees, I would be much more willing to take refugees from the Middle East because directly they, those refugees, are resulting from our foreign policy. We've caused this. Now, in terms of the southern border, um, I understand that uh, for the past 20, 30 years, our kind of open borders policy has incentivized those to come here. But I really think that... Uh, um, you know, especially given the fact that we've passed Obamacare now uh, in the past six years or so, uh, um, if Hillary Clinton had won, you can't have an open border state while having a very uh, free welfare state as well. Yes, that is incredibly valid. It could be very well why a lot, a lot jumped over to the Trump side because they were able to understand that that position. If you articulate it in that manner. It makes a great deal of sense. I think the uh, what sort of put a bad taste in the mouth the mouth of a lot of people. Like I'm, I, I'm a, more of a proponent of either you know, my, like like Gary Johnson was the migrant work visas or um, you know pathways to si- making so the, becoming a citizen is a massive pain in the ass even if you have the financial means and free time to do it. I think. What happened was with the sort of hesitate to use the term basket of deplorables here, but with, you know, the the uh, faction of Trump voters that alt right who really spit the vitriol and kind of as a result grabbed the most attention. That's where that very articulate message that you just laid out gets completely lost. I mean, there's there's many Trump supporters that um, they are quote unquote deplorable, and, and I I will be the first to admit that. And that being said, there are many uh, Hillary Clinton supporters that are um, you know just as bad. Oh, and, absolutely. Uh, so uh, I mean, you know, if we want to focus on the worst of, of both voting types, we can do that. But at the end of the day, Donald Trump put together a platform that gave people hope, while as uh, Hillary Clinton put together a platform that was, uh, I'm not hit. She, you know, this has been rehashed out in the past five days, but uh, there was no support there. Um, she was just the anti-Donald Trump, but Donald Trump was able to not only bring the far right, but he brought the far left together as well. Was it somewhat racial in nature in terms of uh, bringing together far right and far left white voters? Yeah, absolutely. And 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 that's kind of a shame. He didn't he didn't necessarily need to do that. Um, but the protectionist nature of his policies in the United States was was appealing to all across the spectrum. That's why you know you can have a very moderate guy. He will probably be one of the most I really, Probably more so than Arnold Schwarzenegger. I hope he will be. We'll, I, we'll get to that towards the end. I want to touch on, you know, some of the people he's kind of surrounded himself with. Some I'm, I actually am a fan of, others not so much. What has turned me off from Hillary Clinton in a massive way, and, you know, if I even open my mouth about this up here in, you know, the New York City area, unless I'm talking to someone from, like, Staten Island or an Italian guy from Jersey... Is that all right? We had Obama, the, the black dude president, and I actually think for, for some of his faults, I don't think he's done a horrible job. He's a classy guy, he's an intelligent guy. He means very, I mean, he means well. He fucked some things up royally, and he did a good job on on some other stuff. But there was this feeling that now that we had the black dude, it's time for the woman, and everyone around the you know the Northeast was saying, you know, you'd say why Hillary's? It's just the right time. It's just, they anointed her 
they, they, they put the fucking crown on her head. I mean, that convention, when they were rolling out, like, Lena Dunham and everyone else, it was basically, it was finger-wagging at, at straight white males. It was, you are responsible for every problem that everyone throughout history has ever had, and now you are going to pay because Hillary is here to shatter the glass ceiling and the shards will fall upon you and your blood will run in the streets. I mean, that's what it... I'm, you know, I am the most socially liberal motherfucker on the planet. And even I sat there watching that and I was like, these these motherfuckers hate me and they don't even know me. I agree. I mean, um, and, and in this, like, post-Donald Trump world, right, we might as well be in August of 1920 again because, um, and, and this is going to probably get me into trouble, but white women now have added themselves into this victim class, right? So you, you talk to a woman who did not vote for Donald Trump, all of a sudden, she's afraid to leave her house. They're being shitty. Left yeah. and right. It's a You know, men are going around grabbing every one of them by the pussy. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's, um, and which, you know, it, 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 by the way, being uh, you know being a feminist or being an independent woman means going into the booth and pulling a fucking lever for who you who you want, not not because you've been told that voting for Hillary Clinton makes you a proud feminist. But being a feminist means going and saying this is the choice I'm going to make based on the values that I have, not because someone used my fucking gender to convince me to vote for their candidate. Right. Well, was it Janet Reno? You know, probably about eight or twelve months ago, basically said, "You owe it to women everywhere to vote for Hillary Clinton." And uh, you know that, that that may work on you know northeastern and west coast uh, women, but the large majority of the country, these women don't necessarily like to be told what to do from you know quote unquote uh, high flying women's figures. So I, I think it's the end of the day. You know, for white women to lump themselves into, you know, African American, Latino, and LGBT uh, communities as a victim class is ultimately absolutely disrespectful. Because I, I, I'm not a, you know, I, I'm not some theoretical guy. I realize that we have we have work to do in terms of relations between white and black Americans and Latino. Um, but white women claiming the victim class does nothing for that conversation. Absolutely, absolutely absurd. But it has been something that has been reinforced through the fucking media, even like even fictional media, pop culture, like these fucking uh, women's deodorant commercials where the chick's in the bathroom and she's getting herself psyched up to go demand a raise and the older one comes out in the fucking stall and, and eggs are on. He's like, do it. Go for it. Like, get the fuck out. That is unbelievable. I mean, they're fucking, they're, you know, there are white chicks in my age group who get compensated the same fucking way. And I'm sitting next to a white woman right now. Her pussy hasn't been grabbed in like 20 minutes it's <laughs> they're doing, are they not doing fine I, are they living these lives of of quiet misery that we just didn't know about I, my, my sister's woman seems to be doing quite well actually makes more money than I do I, well, what the fuck yeah I mean I, I think it's like you know cat if you get cat called as a white woman he's literally um, walking through it takes 10 years off your life, apparently. Um, it, it, I mean, it, it's absolutely absurd. And, and to, to, you know, equate that kind of behavior from stupid-ass uh, white men towards white women to the real problems that are going on in uh, minority communities is, it, it, it's just, it, it's, it's, failing to see the, the trees through the forest or whatever the fuck that uh, analogy is. Yeah, I do not disagree with, with any of that at all. So I think for me, the, the problem with, with Trump, my massive problem with him was, uh, I guess, I felt that he was, his back and forth with the Khan family didn't help. I thought that... Not at all. I, I think one of our biggest issues with these, and I have no problem saying it, you know, radical Islamic fucking terrorists. 
I don't know why the left can't fucking say that term. That's what they are. It's religion. Religion is nothing more than a set of ideas. And if you subscribe to a set of ideas that tell you to murder innocent people, you're a fucking lunatic. That you can, if you can't uh, disassociate between that and a quiet Muslim family that goes to pray at the mosque a couple times a week, then you are delusional and people living in the middle of this country aren't going to want to vote for you. They're not going to trust you with their security. I thought his, his rhetoric towards the Khan family and Muslims in general were a, a sitting U.S. president to, to have that could serve as a massive, massive recruiting tool for um, ISIS. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a fair point. That's uh, probably uh, my biggest problem throughout the campaign was his inability to just shut the fuck up. Um, it was funny because the, the con, uh, I don't have the exact date in front of me right now, but the, the, the con issue was, I want to say, within a week, week and a half of when uh, Director Comey brought, uh, brought forth the information that um, Congress was investigating Hillary Clinton. And I, I was a huge non-never-Trump guy. And I said to my buddies, I'm like, somehow, some way, Donald Trump will fuck this up. And, and of course, you know, he gets into this petty back and forth with a gold star family. And that was probably the absolute worst thing that he could have done. Um, I, I, I won't defend his comments there. You know, it's unfortunate that they, they kept going on and on and on. Um, I think that he thought he had a little bit of cover initially when he said, oh, what does the, what does the wife have to say? And then, of course, you know, he brought it on himself and boom, she slams him too. And, and that's going to be something that, uh, that's going to be his biggest weakness, um, as he, uh, transitions. He needs to be able to, um, fight the right battle and take those losses when they come. You know, if he would have just, you know, let them bombard him, during the primary and didn't even answer back, that's fine. You know, uh, Gold Star family deserves to have their opinion heard. And, you know, he should, he should have just said, you know, I respect their sacrifice and I'm sorry that, uh, that they're hurting. But um, you, you'll get no, no real defense from me on those comments. Yeah, I think Kelly and Conway did a fantastic job of, of reeling him in and getting him to... Um, stay on point there is this fucking amazing video clip of him from it had to be i think a week before the election he's on stage i think florida he's got the the make america great again hat on he's just orange skin gray in the sun. he's like we're gonna be nice and cool nice and cool donald don't say anything nice and cool. i'm not gonna get baited I have fucking, I have watched that clip so many times and just like, gotten fucking high off my ass and watched it. It's fucking hilarious, but it, she reeled him in like a motherfucker. She's a smart chick, and now you mention his transition team, and this is kind of, you know, where, where I wanted this to go, because there's some concerns. Yeah. I, I hope that she plays a significant role in the Trump White House, because, um, you know, looking at the guys he's surrounded with, um, yep. Mike Pence, religious ex extremist, uh, ben, ben Carson, idiot savant who's a, apparently only skilled as brain surgery, uh, Chris, Christie, Chris Christie who is afflicted with being Chris Christie, Newt Gingrich, but probably one of the biggest fucking hypocrites on the planet. So what sort of, you know, my New York City view of, I'm sure, obviously Pence is in Indiana, wildly popular because that's... I, I can, uh, um, you know, Mike Pence, I don't think he was actually that popular in Indiana, right? So, he seems to uh, the carry, way, carry a great deal of sway amongst so, the Bible crowd. So, so yeah, that's why he was uh, a very effective vice president for uh, Donald Trump, because, you know, he is a, a Christian man, but I don't think that he was all that popular in um, Indiana, because uh, before him, it was, uh, I believe it was Steve King, um, a very, he was a pre-religious guy who, who didn't govern as a uh, religious guy. Basically, he said, we're going to do what's best for the state. Um, and he endorsed Mike Pence coming in. And Mike Pence said, okay, I'm a very Christian guy. I'm going to, I'm going to govern from the far right and I'm going to try to, you know, inflict my beliefs on the, the constituents of Indiana. Um, 
as as, <laughs> as it's kind of been sold up here, um, Pence was was taking this big move, you know, jumping ship from from a state where he was like the man to go to go out with this this renegade. So that there's certainly a possibility that's more of just um, you know the New York Times, Washington Post seeping into uh, seeping into my brain. It's possible, and, and we'll have to go back and, and look at it. Um, but as you know, kind of just moving on from that point. Um, I, I, I do think that Kelly Dan Conway did a, a very good job as um, campaign manager for Donald Trump, but um, I think that he could have been far more effective if he had good surrogates. He had some of the worst surrogates um, I've ever seen. Uh, Katrina Pearson is, uh, by and large, might be the dumbest person I've ever seen speak. Um, Corey Lewandowski, he, he 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 can make an argument, but he's just not uh, you know totally effective. And I Corey, and I get it. He's a- Corey Lewandowski is the is the Waylon Smithers to Donald Trump's Mr. Burns. There is yeah, no doubt in my mind that at night he he lies under the covers masturbating while crying the name Mr. Trump over and over again. I it, oh, you see him on CNN and he's like brought to to tears whenever anyone would raise a, even the most mild anti-Trump point. Uh, I agree. Um, the only job that he really could have, in my opinion, in the Trump White House would be would be chief of staff. Um, other than that, I, I don't want him heading some agency, whatever, whatever. Um, and, and that would put him directly at odds with Kellyanne Conway and Rice Priebus. Uh, um, I think that ultimately, Rice Priebus is probably the most qualified of the three. Um, in the, last, the job he did in, holding that fucking party together through, throughout this thing was incredibly impressive. Agreed. Um, but if Kellyanne Conway is the only person that can talk to Donald Trump and they need to shut the fuck up, then it absolutely needs to be her. Um, there were some, you know, rumors kind of the last two weeks that it was uh, somewhat pre- previous kind of keeping him from making an ass out of himself. And then there were other rumors that it was Kellyanne Conway. Hopefully um, it's one of those two and definitely not the fan and, you know, the former CEO of his campaign. Uh, is he the um, is he the Breitbart? Right, Breitbart guy. Yeah, I believe it's Steve Bannon. Yeah, he's yeah he's the one, he's the one who who decided they were gonna yeah that they were gonna use Breitbart to to hijack the the GOP for the alt right. Which I mean, look, guys like Milo Yiannopoulos, I keep you keep coming back to this uh, culture war thing when he got kicked off of Twitter because his followers made fun of Leslie Jones because Ghostbusters. <laughs> Because Ghostbusters sucked. Do people, like the people who run Twitter are obviously massive fucking way left progressive liberals. Do they not realize that shit like that was going to come back to bite them in the ass eventually? Uh, I mean, do you, I, I don't think that that necessarily was you know, a, a cause. I think that's just like one of those small underlying symptoms of, yeah, well that, of just that, the, the culture that we're in, right? Yeah, um, it out as a very, for me, because I spend so much time on the internet, that one stuck out the most. But when that's just one, you know, when that's like a, a toothpick in a mountain of this happening, the campus protests over kids wearing a sombrero on Cinco de Mayo, or 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 sushi not being good enough. Yeah, people because it's uh, it's uh, what is the uh, what is the word ethnic? Uh, I don't even know what the word is. Cultural appropriation. Uh, that one. Appropriation. Ethnic appropriation. Yes. Yeah. I mean, psychotic stuff that just drove you know your average Joe who sees this and says, what the fuck is this country turning into? You know, back, w- back when I was growing up, we still called the Latinos the Browns. Like, fuck, and, you know, now you're, now you're not allowed to eat at a Taco Bell because it's cultural appropriation. Like, over, we've been dealing with that. It's really kicked into high gear, I'd say, what, over the past, past two to three years, that's gotten way off the shit. People, oh, great. people yeah. 
hear enough of that, and they get incredibly frustrated. Yeah, like, uh, I mean, you know, you, you talk to our parents, right? And, and they're so blunt. And, you know, you say, oh, you know, you kind of can't say something like that. And they're like, why not? And it's like, oh, well, they actually didn't say anything that offensive, you know? They, they said, no, I don't know. I can't even think of an example. But you, you just have to take a step back. And, and not everybody who says something shitty is a shitty person. And the, the rush to judgment, to label, people who might say something, you know, that off the cuff might not be perfect, um, it, it's... It's just very off-putting, um, and, and the absolute antithetical definition of tolerance. So, absolutely agree with you on that, that point. I think so. Uh, I think the, you know, the left kind of needs to take a step back and see that that they are the ones who, in large part, created this, both with their sort of forced progressive agenda outside of the political realm the you know the the you can't say that stuff and the anointing of a a politician seemingly just because she was a woman willing to overlook uh, every scandal every speech to a big bank every contradiction just willing to overlook all of that cuz she was a chick you get how that fucking infuriated a lot of people so what yeah. what do you think we can look at from a, a Trump White House I would say you know what do you what are your expectations for his first hundred days or so and then, you know, kind of going forward from there I, I guess the the big ones would be social you know social stuff are we going to a lot of women are they're very afraid of the uh, that the, the Roe versus Wade decision could get overturned depending on who uh, what kind of Supreme Court appointees we get. Um, mm -hmm. What do you think he'll do in terms of health care? And then I guess the other thing, the other big thing would be the foreigner situation, we'll call it, with regard to Mexicans and ISIS. So two, yeah. two different things, but we can lump them into a, a, a brown people from another country category. So, and then I guess the economy would be the, the last one. Okay, so... Uh, First and foremost, the economy. You know, after you know, Trump won North Carolina, MSNBC just throws up the Dow futures, shows it down 900 points, and, and basically they want to talk about the, the Brexit. You know, this is what you've done. You know, oh, it looks like he's going to win, and, and here, here's what it is. Um, I, I don't think that uh, um, economically... Um, you know, we will see that big dip that you saw with Brexit, but, um, you know, it's easy to say four days later. Um, you know, Brexit, you know, they, they took a big, probably 10, you know, 8 to 12 percent uh, hit to the markets, but within two or three weeks, they were within, you know, one or two points of where they were. And, and you brought up kind of um, the whole... Uh, abortion thing. One of the things with um, Donald Trump in terms of, you know, we have a four and four Supreme Court right now. Um, and obviously, uh, Barack Obama is not going to be able to get um, Merrick Garland through uh, in the next two and a half months or whatever. So that's really going to be Donald Trump's first big, first big decision. And, and I really hope. You know, that, um, you know, he's going to need to give a little bit to those who supported him. And, you know, as a, um, as somebody who, who supports the rights of, uh, gay and lesbian folks to, to be able to get married and have equal rights, I hope that he is able to find somebody who is, um, you know, tolerant in that regard. And, um, you know, and possibly maybe a little bit less tolerant in terms of the abortion. Maybe find somebody that, um, I don't want to say less tolerant, but I think that abortion is an, is an issue that's kind of been litigated and I don't really see it coming back up again. And, and I'm not a, you know, constitutional scholar, but I would much rather, um, err on the side of, on, on the side of, Ensuring that, that, uh, gay and lesbian folks have that, um, protected right to get married 
And, yeah, so if it ever gets relitigated again, um, I, I think that, you know, the Supreme Court can, can make a ruling that, you know, keeps in place uh, the quote-unquote women's right to choose. The rhetoric from the, uh, the right, and particularly the Christian conservative right on that has always been, if we can get back the Supreme Court, we'll overturn Roe versus Wade. What I don't understand on that end is if uh, this is supposed to be the party of, you know, individual freedoms and personal responsibility, then why is that something they would seek to overturn? I understand them saying that it shouldn't, that it, it you know, maybe leave it up to the states for it to be tax, taxpayer funded. You know, I... You yeah. could definitely sway me on on a on a taxpayer not having to fund someone else's abortion. I can meet you on that one. But, uh, yeah. To say, you know, a guy like, you know, if if Ted Cruz has someone's ear, I don't know. I don't know how safe that decision is. Right. So um, first and foremost, the, the seat that's being replaced is Anthony Scalia. Um, so you might see uh, Donald Trump go really hard right on that on that seat. I, I don't doubt that. Um, and, you know, many on the left will say it is a completely intolerant pick. Um, but, you know, first and foremost, Antonin Scalia is a, a longtime uh, conservative, and I, I don't think it will change much. But there's nothing more that Donald Trump wants than to be liked. And that's what I think a lot is you know, a lot of people are getting lost in this whole argument. He he is a narcissist. There's no doubt about that. And he wants to be liked so much that um, he will abandon the far right the first chance he gets. And, and, and good for him for doing that. You know, I, I think, like, socially, you know, a lot of people on the left might be disappointed by his first Supreme Court uh, nominee. Uh, but I, I think after that, once he gives that kind of... Um, hey, thanks for coming out. Thanks for supporting me. He is he is going to be very very set it. Um, if he does that, he'll he will win win over the confidence of the more pragmatic people on the left. Yeah, I mean it'll it'll take time though, right? So um, you know you're going to have an appointment, you know, probably in the first two weeks um, of his presidency, and it's going to piss a lot of people off. Um, but you know, the next one, if there, there is a next one that comes up, I, I see him being a lot more centered on that. Kind of touching back to the economy, and I see Donald Trump really reaching out to the African-American community more than uh, um, any other community. He's, he's surrounded himself his entire life with African-Americans. I see him really focusing on schools. Um, I talked with people who have been at, at, at Donald Trump rallies, and he hits on this, you know, at every rally. He wants to make schools, um, you know, a number one priority, and I think that will be one of the hallmarks of his presidency. I think I read that he got either between 10 and 13 percent of the African-American vote. I, I see that really going up. Um, if he does run for real action, I mean, unless there's, you know, a complete scandal, uh, I, he, he'll definitely run for real action. And I, I wouldn't be surprised to see that number jump dramatically, which would be great for uh, both Donald Trump and, and the right at the same time. Right now, again, in the up in the uh, the, the liberal half of the, uh, the echo chamber up here is is the impression that he, he, he his, his orange skin aside, he is bad for anyone with even the slightest bit of, of melon in their skin. I mean, these mother, uh, motherfuckers are... F I am not shitting you. You're, you. you're getting to observe this down in, in Georgia. I mean, people are shitting in their fucking pants up here right now. Um, and it's almost... It's awkward to watch. I'm sure your news feed is filled with it. Fucking self-righteous, annoying, lengthy Facebook posts. How am I supposed to explain this election result to my children? To my daughter. Jesus yeah, uh, fucking Christ. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, this has been widely reported over the last day or two, but, you know, last I saw, ABC News reported that Donald Trump got 13% of the 
African American vote up from five Mitt Romney in 2012. Yes, I get it. You know, uh, Mitt Romney was running against the African American guy. Donald Trump is running against a white woman. That being said, uh, Donald Trump got 29% of the Latino vote uh, versus 27. Uh, while essentially openly campaigning that, you know, for at least some time that he was going to essentially deport 12 million people. And build the, so, build I mean, the wall. I, yeah, so I, I think that, uh, I think build the wall actually resonates pretty well uh, with a lot of Latino citizens, um, especially those that have come here uh, legally. Now, with that being said, the the support plan, I, I'm not in favor of it. I don't think it's possible, um, and, and I don't think that, honestly, Donald Trump will do it. But, but, but we'll see. In terms of, um, you know, some of the other 100 days things, I mean, I you know, I'm not a Donald Trump lackey, but I think his, you know, call for uh, the uh, term limit, I think that that's just more openly going to subject um, our democracy to corruption. Uh, you know, say if you can only have a, a congressman that can serve four years, well, you know, two, you know, three years into his term, you know, after he's been reelected, um, you're going to have some think tank in Washington just throwing millions of dollars into that race just to find some, you know, somebody who looks good on paper that you can basically buy and sell, um, you know, throw tons of campaign ads and, you know, Joe Schmo and, and whoever, you know, they don't know any better, you know, they, there's no name recognition. Is, is, the re, is the reverse not also true, though, if you're, if you're a career politician with, with what you might call a safe seat because... <laughs> Um, because you've, you know, the voters in your, uh, in your, uh, you know, I guess the uh, the Chuck Schumers of the world who their their reelection is is all but guaranteed, uh, and not saying that uh, Chuck is corrupt in any way, but doesn't if you're in a situation like that, as you kind of rub rub elbows with lobbyists and get to know people, doesn't that also open the door for a massive amount of corruption? I, I, I mean, every, everybody I knows the, what Chuck. I actually find the the term limits to be maybe one of the the more refreshing pieces of sort of the, the Trump platform. Yeah, no, I, I get it. Uh, you know, a lot of my friends that are uh, you know Trump Trump lovers, they 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 ate it up. Uh, I, I think it's I, I think it's kind of short sighted. Uh, but you know, everybody knows what Chuck Schumer is. You know, Chuck Schumer's in in Wall Street pocket, right? Um, and when you go to vote for or against Chuck Schumer, you know what you're getting. Um, you know, John McCain. Do you think John McCain, um, we kind of all know what, what John McCain is, what he stands for. Um, so, so a lot of these, these senators, I, 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 don't, I don't see a need for necessarily term limits. And, you know, these state seats that are a few million bucks here and there, it, it means a lot. And, and so I, I think you're going to see a lot more corruption, um, you know, in the House for some of these smaller races where it takes a lot less votes to win by, you know, imposing these term limits. Okay. Interesting. And then I guess the, the last thing before we wrap, because, you know, we touched on it and his, his rhetoric at times was extreme and I think off-putting to a lot of people on the um, the ISIS stuff and how he would deal with that because there's obviously there's two issues there's the um, there's the threat to Americans at home which is very much a you know you, you no longer need to qu come into this country to do that you can radicalize over the internet and then there is the the issue of the region itself and the threat that it poses to our allies in, in Europe, the, any the threats to Israel, which are kind of a, a, a constant. So how do you, how do you see a, a Trump White House handling what, you know, are pretty much di two different sides of the same coin there, that the issue of terrorism uh, abroad and at home? Okay, so, I mean, that's a, a really good point. Uh, you know, the homegrown stuff, I don't know. Um, I don't think really anybody can answer that question. In terms of abroad, really Donald Trump, he that's really the only runway he has, right? He 
ran as a dove, you know, especially when it comes to the Middle East, except for ISIS, he ran as essentially a super hawk. So um, you can expect boots on the ground in, um, you know, in Syria, uh, which will be very uh, tumultuous given the subsequent Syrian civil war between, uh, you know, the militias and the, the na national forces, especially when you put in Russia in there. So I'm, I'm not really, you know, envious of the position that he's put himself in um, as running on essentially slaying ISIS and uh, I mean, he's, he's run on flying ISIS, um, but in order to do that, well, there's going to be some issues in Syria and so forth that I don't think will be as easy as he may think they will be. But just just one more point, like, if you have another question on, on Syria, we can, we can go for that. But I, I did want to ask you a couple of questions. Go, uh, go ahead. Yeah. So I, I hear, you know, Lena Dunham and, and so forth, you know, talk about these fucking emails. What, what, were, your, what were your thoughts when, when you saw some of these WikiLeaks emails? Um, for, all right. For me, it was because, and like I said, I was, I was put off by Donald, a lot of his rhetoric. I, I felt that he had sort of, uh, you know, the American presidency to me is a, a seat to be revered, and I think it's a seat to be held by by a gentleman, even someone who, like, W, who had a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit of that folksiness about him. He was never crude. There, he was always, he was always presidential. There was, and it, may, it might be a very vain point for, for a president, but I want someone who is presidential because they are our uh, representative to, to the planet. I, I was not going to vote for either Donald Trump nor Hillary Clinton. I was, I've been a Gary Johnson guy for long before this election even kicked off. I was ready to vote for him because on my, on my pet issues of legal pot and a far less interventionist foreign policy, uh, he is you know, very strong. So when the emails came out, my, my impression was, well, I'm not fucking voting for her anyway. So... This is to me. It was just more, yep, typical DC shit. Out of, I was like, you know what? Her and her, and, neither her nor the Donald gives me what I want in a candidate. Yeah, I, neither of them won your vote. They, neither of them deserve your vote. They did not. Um, I thought when I saw James Comey on TV the first time as he was going down that entire docket, I was sure that an indictment was coming. Yeah. I think that anyone anyone else would have had their ass in a frying pan, but to me it was, and I think this is probably exactly how middle America viewed it, more D.C. shit. So uh, I voted for Gary Johnson, and middle America voted uh, to drain the swamp. So I guess my view on it was not entirely different from what a Trump voter might have looked at it as where I guess we split was that I was so off put by the way that Donald carried himself throughout the campaign that I could not in good conscience vote for him just to beat her uh, crap and shady as though she may be. So yeah, that's fair. And, and I was in a, a very similar vote until probably two weeks ago. You know, the, the email that came out between uh, Hillary Clinton and John Podesta you know, it really didn't get a whole lot of mainstream media play. It was, you know, she went through essentially a, a nine or a ten point uh, Middle East campaign plan. I, I saw you and, say that, yeah. And, um, you know, everybody said, oh, yeah, you know, that shows she's smart. And, and honestly, it was actually pretty well thought out. But there were probably about three or four things in there that I thought were legitimately, there was no doubt in my mind that they were top secret. One, that we have uh, CAA officers essentially embedded within uh, the KRG, uh, along with, you know, special forces serving alongside of them. You know, this is going to a, you know, not only from her kind of homebrew server, but um, to a, a fucking a Gmail account. You know, how, how is that? So, I, I mean, everybody, you know, wants to say, oh, the emails don't mean much. Um, but I would be very surprised if someone somewhere was not... I, I don't think that it's any um, any stretch to say that our Middle East campaign was highly handicapped from her action. I, I think that we'll 
continue to see uh, that kind of crap come out over the next six months or so. I just wanted to get that point in. One last thing. What do you, what do you think should happen with Hillary, you know, moving forward? Honestly, I we have we, we've had the Benghazi hearings, we've had the fucking email stuff. She lost the election. She's not running in in twenty twenty. Yeah. Um, what what good does it do us at this point to waste government time and resources? She should certainly never be involved in American politics again. I mean, I think once you run and lose, it it seems like that seems to be it. Like a lot of these people kind of ride off into the sunset and they'll they'll do or say something when you know Romney. Like he didn't you didn't hear from him. Until he was fighting Holyfield, then he's gone again, then he's, you know, yeah. back in March, he's, yeah. So, I mean, honestly, just, you know, let her, let her go to, go to Chappaqua with Bill and you know, do some charity work and, and hang out with her grandkids. I don't, what fucking, hang out with Diane Reynolds. <laughs> what? What fucking purpose at this point does it serve to, to to go through that? Like, what I want, and this is why I, I was happy with the tone that Trump has taken over the past few days, and it's also why these protests have driven me nuts, and these calls for these people are petitioning the Electoral College to to put their votes in for Hillary. I mean... I, w- I just let's let this campaign and all the shit that was slung during it be over because this, this has been going on since since the 90s this ba- this back and forth between the left and the right where one side just obstructs the other and gets in the way and it's the American people who suffer and it's our pocketbooks that suffer and it's our security that suffers so I'd much rather no. I would like to see what I would like to see going forward. Hillary is out of the political spectrum. She goes and lives as as grandma in Westchester. The the left becomes essentially the the loyal opposition, and the Republicans will be watched like fucking hawks. Democrats get in the way when when they should, but when it's a piece of legislation or a policy that's a little closer to the center that could be compromised on. Let it fucking ride. You know, this shit where, you know, well, they obstructed Obama for, for eight years, so now we're going to we're gonna get them and try to, you know, that's, that doesn't do any, any good for anyone. All, all that that does and all that marching in the street yelling, not my president does, is serve to drive this divide that we have that really is getting, I don't think it's at the bad place yet, but the seeds have been laid over the past few years for it to go to a very, very dark spot. And I don't think anyone wants that. You know, much as I, I yeah, much as I might crack on, you know, make fun of fucking people from the Midwest or, or you know, whatever, like fucking yokels, or and as much as yeah. I may make fun of, you know, bisexual New Yorkers or fucking you know, Lena Dunn yeah. of the world, whatever. We are far better served by just kind of fights over. Let's now the goal is for Donald Trump to have a a good presidency where he puts forward policies yeah. that benefit the United States. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, with many of my uh, you know Trump supporting friends, you know, they want Hillary, you know, behind bars. Um, I, I think that honestly, Donald Trump needs to come out and say, you know, essentially Barack Obama and Donald Trump need to, to cut a deal, and that deal needs to be in the, the form of get uh, Gerald Ford and and Richard Nixon. You know, Gerald Ford after Richard Nixon uh, stepped down, he pardoned Nixon for uh, any crimes he he may or you know any crimes he did or or may have committed during. Uh, Watergate. I think that Trump needs to come out and and call for that and say that he would be good if uh, Barack Obama did that. So so we can all move forward. That being said, I think that you know the ugliness of politics in this country. I think that Donald Trump could be a, a very good president 
And I don't necessarily think that he would ever unite the country. And, and I get it. I think a lot of uh, people on the left would have said Barack Obama could be a, a very good president and he'd never unite the country. Uh, you know, but at the end of the day, going into this election, there was pretty much nobody on the, the left. Well, there, there were people on the left and right, but Barack Obama could have easily won re-election against either candidate. Oh, absolutely. So, um, you, you know, so oh, Obama definitely got past it. I don't, I don't know that Trump can. I think he's positioned, you know, in terms of his ability to make deals to be able to do it. But I, I don't know that people will ever be willing to let some of the things that he said on the campaign trail, for rightly or wrongly, I think wrongly, uh, but I don't think they'll be able to let, let that go. I, I don't think they will either, based on, based on what I've seen going on in the, the streets of, of New York City over the, the past couple of days, but, but hopefully we're, uh, we're wrong. I got a wrap. I'm about to take the uh, the lady into the city, but I oh really? Oh yeah, we're gonna go. Uh, we got a little place, a uh, little place that da- uh, way downtown that uh, you can get. They will actually serve you. It's like a dive bar with a nice beer selection, and they serve you like yeah. steamed and fried dumplings at the bar. It's fucking awesome. Oh wow, Korean spot. It's just uh, it's like just like an it's like a fucking like hipster dive bar that's been around for I think close to a century. Uh, oh wow! Well, what's a what's a beer cost at a dive bar in New York? Uh, they they still rope you for fucking New York prices. Like five six bucks. Yeah yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we, I'm a- we got to get you. Uh, when are you uh, you coming up at all anytime soon? I'll probably uh, fly up uh, Tuesday or Wednesday at Thanksgiving. And then uh, fly back Sunday, and then I'll, uh, I don't know what I'm doing for Christmas yet. I'll be home, but I just, it'll be somewhere between the, you know, the 18th and the 23rd, just depending on how much work I got left to do. Fortunately, I can work from home and telecommute with my job a little bit, so uh, I'm kind of a little bit open. All right, well, uh, yeah, let's stay in touch if, um, if we can. It would be, uh, it would be fantastic to get, uh, to get together with uh, NG, uh, soon to be a father. Author. Oh, oh, I, I was unaware. He said he, he said he tr- uh, we were uh, we were down there for the game last week, and he said he tried to tell you, but you kept going off about uh, about the Podesta emails and WikiLeaks. <laughs> <laughs> Congrats! Wow. Yeah. Can you imagine that? You know that that not not seven years ago he was having a juice on the on the boardwalk and just. Throwing up on oh, homeless man. on a homeless man. Oh, tremendous! Uh, and, and just gambling his paycheck times two away dude. at the at the uh, Caesar's Palace. Dude, when um yeah, I told uh, I told Kim uh you know that we were gonna do this call this afternoon. Um, so I needed a little free time. We were on our way back from the gym. I was telling her some of the AC stories. I was talking about. Uh, about how we would all drift apart around 2 a.m., but then sometime between 4 and 5, we'd we'd find each other at a little spot called Bear Exposure. Bear X. Uh, <laughs> have, you been, have you been back? I haven't been down to, to AC in a couple of years. I haven't been to Bear X at all. Uh, I think the last time I was at Bear X was when I showed up with a 30-pack, you showed up with a 30-pack, and you showed up with a 30-pack around 3 in the morning. I think, uh, was that the night that, uh, it was, it was either News or Tommy just fucking passed out on the stage and, and was, was removed by security. Yeah, dude, we... I, I remember Mr., uh, I won't, I won't say his last name, but, uh, Mr. DC may have brought in a BBW back to the Flaming O. <laughs> I know exactly what and who you are talking about, and, uh, yeah. Oh, those were the fucking, those were the days. Well, look, dude, uh, appreciate, appreciate you calling in. Once I have a full episode produced, I'll, uh, I'll shoot you a message with a link. Good shit, man. It was, it was great to have a, uh, uh, conversation on politics without calling somebody a, a fucktard. You know, we, no, we, the, the discourse in this country really, really needs to improve. Agreed, agreed. All right, man, well, have a, uh, enjoy those dumplings and, uh, your six dollar beers. Fuck yeah. Catch you later, bro. All right, later, brother. Bye. Like, as I said, and I have been saying, I vehemently oppose the Trump candidacy. 
But I also understand that since he has been elected president, he will in fact be presiding over the United States. Uh, as such, my hope is that he leads as a moderate with a nod towards individual freedoms and personal responsibility while taking at least a little bit of a bite out of my taxes. I realize that might sound a bit delusional, but the bottom line is a successful Donald will mean a successful America. And I realize I'm probably reaching there, and I had a whole thing that I was going to say about, like, you know, getting your getting your asses out and, you know, winning some seats in the midterm election coming up in a couple of years because hiding in a safe space and bathing in each other's tears isn't going to do shit. But I wouldn't even be able to do it justice. John Oliver actually beat me to it, so I'm just going to give you a little bit of... Um, of his advice. Take a listen. This is from uh, the season-ending episode of last week tonight, right after the election. And I know this is all depressing, but it does bring us back to the important question, what the fuck do we do now? And for the record, the answer is not move to Canada. Literally, the only excuse to ever migrate to Canada is if you were born there originally, it's springtime, and you are a goose. That's it. That is it. No, instead, we're going to need to stay here and fight. And not just politically in four years when he's up for re-election, but constantly monitoring legislation as it moves through Congress and fucking voting when your legislators come up for re-election in two years. But that is still below the barest minimum of what is going to be needed. Because for the last eight years, we've had a president we could assume would generally stand up for the rights of all Americans. But that is going to change now. So we're going to have to actively stand up for one another. And it can't be just sounding off on the internet or sharing think pieces or videos like this one that echo around your bubble. I'm talking about actual sacrifice to support people who are now under threat. So, if you can afford the time or money to support organizations that are going to need help under a Trump administration. Uh, for instance, if you're concerned about women's health, donate to Planned Parenthood or the Center for Reproductive Rights. Uh, if you don't believe man-made global warming is a silly issue, uh, donate to the National uh, Resources Defense Council. If you don't think refugees are a terrorist army in disguise, donate to the International Refugee Assistance Project. Oh, and uh, also, given these guys' track record, I would also recommend donations to the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, the Trevor Project for LGBTQ Youth, and the Mexican American Legal Defense and Education Fund. Because that last one would be perfect if your compassion for Latinos goes beyond, say, I don't know, occasionally eating a fucking taco bowl. And, and do check the box for recurring donations if you can, because this is not a short-term problem. And also, just, just for a dash, I'll give you just a dash of fun here. I will point out, if you have relatives who supported Trump, you can give money in their name. So consider your holiday shopping this year done. Happy holidays, Nana. The Trevor Project thanks you. And there is there's one more group that I would single out for help here. And that is the press. Because as we've seen, Trump is a masterful denier of both reality and responsibility. He's a man who would kick you in the nuts and then tell you that your penis did it. <laughs> so the press is going to face challenges. Not just because Trump's chief strategist is Steve Bannon of Breitbart News, but also because of yet another promise that Trump made. If I become president, oh, do they have problems. They're going to have such problems. I'm going to open up our libel laws so when they write purposely negative and horrible and false articles, we can sue them and win lots of money. We're going to open up those libel laws. Okay. Well, first, there is no federal libel law for Trump to open up. And as many supposed recipients of Trump's charitable gifts might tell you, you can't open something up if it doesn't exist. But, but that attitude of punishing the press is genuinely worrisome now that he is going to be president. So instead of sharing partisan memes you found on republicgoofs.redneck and democrappy.cuck, you need to support actual journalism by buying a subscription to outlets like The Times uh, or The Post or your local newspaper or donating to groups like ProPublica, a non-profit which does great investigative journalism. The point is... Ah, fantastic stuff there. And I know the idea of reading a newspaper sounds scary because you're fucking busy with uh, Snapchat or whatever gay shit it is you guys do. But uh, give it a shot sometime. You might actually like it. 
Don't forget, you can get at me on Twitter, at Mike Montone, on Facebook, www.facebook.com slash The Savage Crew, on the web at www.thesavagecrew.com, on YouTube, on YouTube and Instagram, we are The Savage Crew. Until next time, remember, living in Brooklyn, growing an unkempt beard, and dressing in plaid with suspenders doesn't make you a lumbersexual, it just makes you an asshole.